the support for the very low cooldown is one of the best tools for doing so. Such a high percentage slow on such a low cooldown. Yep. As well as being able to shred the tanks while Charm misses and Alec gets away with that one. Looks like the backs from the AD carries have kept them quite oh. even here. So the engage comes in from Crumbs from the brush. Altec uses heal. Teleport behind Freeze, but there's another teleport, so he feels safe to stay. The first kill goes onto Altec with both summoners blown. Moon trying to go in for a kill, but Crumbs tunnels out of the way. Remy's trying to keep them off more assists here and gets back to the wrong turret. That's going to be a kill on her. Moon eventually falls, and the chase continues. Legendary is going to pull off of this one, and a back and forth equals a two to Our one. Actually sacrificed a large amount of experience, and he's kind of paying for it right now, as we saw he burned his flash away. It's now a two-level disadvantage, but Alex is on the roam. He's and impact that would have him as well. Pops it, gets his passive. Yeah, no, oh no, Legendary goes down. Impact makes sure he gets something for his troubles, and he may even make it out of this one alive. Got There's joke. a room prison. He can get that collection back up. Oh, flashed over. The cocoon's gonna come if Alex wants to follow. He does not waste his flash because he doesn't have the vision. You gotta be kidding me, Impact. Altec in the bot, very far up. He just gets vision of that ward, so it looks like he's gonna start running the wrong way, which is technically the right one so far. There's that chilling smite you were talking about as well. The sight stone is there for him to get his wards. The kill's gonna come up. Remy gets that with the binding. Already had the assist on the tormented soil, but it seems it. He's giving it a little bit more. Okay, starting to feel sure. They're baiting him into this one. This is the bait they need to keep going. He could still go on to RF Legendary here. Puts the vitals down. He's going hard. RF's ultimate is there, and he has to flash away. Using crumbs as a brick wall there, and the chase comes on now. But look who's coming up the river. Uh, Moon Impact has friends. Swan, the rest of energy is coming in. Impact still alive, but he finally goes down as soon as the rest of the team gets there. That means to be able to pick up a few. Give him the assist he was fighting so hard to get the kills for, and pick up some good gold. This will be an extended chase. It could actually get something for Altec, but crumbs is able to dip, dive his way out of this. Yeah. One for one. Go over towards the top side. Pulls up uh, Remy with him, as well as Freeze, and they're going to give up the first dragon. You'd think that this would have been a dragon for Rift Herald trade uh, as soon as Crumbs ran that clear, That's what the clear was. Yeah, they pinged the Rift Herald, but now Crumbs is instead going in for some deep wards and some counter jumping. Again, Crumbs is about to patent the... On the side of Renegade, so he is doing exactly the right thing on the bot side. Deterrent from RF Legendary as well as the... Rift Herald goes down. That's going to be given to Mr. Freeze. Uh, it might be the last time we see that. Yeah, Le Legendary knows he can't do too much there, but neither are going to stop each other's teleport, so if they want to get to a fight, they can get to a fight. It's going to be hectic. If it happens, that is going to be the Flash Cocoon from Moon. That misses, and is that enough for Crumbs? He's looking for the Flash Entry. Gets it onto Moon. Repels up, but he's going to be first to go down. When he comes down, he actually makes it out, and it's Crumbs who goes down. The Initiator, as Energy, sees that and assesses it very well. Looking at trinkets, few of an upgraded far sights for the AD carries as we see. Dragon's back up. And here will be, I should say, that dragon that Energy or Renegades was going to grab to be number one. Now Energy's number two. And Renegades can't get in position to stop this one. Nope. Crumbs had used his ultimate to arrive at the last fight. Held on in the top lane, made things tough for the game or team in the beginning, and that's the result we're seeing here. Energy with a lot of control. That's a binding they need to be able to work off of, but it was too much distance. Nobody could close it. Moon repels over the wall, thinking Energy had the upper hand there. Splits the upright. Remy misses a binding there, going for the flash and ignite forward. And now it's Impact versus Alex each here in the bot lane. Impact getting crushed down. Alex standing still, and Impact not able to get around to get any more battles, but he finally does. Challenge accepted, and Impact comes out on top. We just saw RF trying to put a forward ward down, but it did get cleared out, and Energy is right back and ready. Those 20-minute home guards putting them back into position to contest this dragon that we thought was going down very fast, and is only at half health. TP coming in from Impact on the top side. He's very far behind the team, though, towards bottom lane on the minimap. Dragon's gonna be left alone. The fight happens, and it looks like Moon kind of propels out to Alex to make sure he can get away. NRG is setting up towards the mid, trying to deny vision towards that brush. Legendary too far in. He gets picked out, and uh, Renegades just starts falling one by one as Energy continued to dance themselves back, back, and back until they could take the fight. That was an example of how well this Energy team can kite thanks to the supportive high cooldown maxed pillar of ice from Trundle. That pillar 
is on an eight second cooldown. And despite Impact's TP coming in so far away and yeah, then running for that, about 15 I, seconds before he good. joined, they still win the fight. It's because they could disengage it for so long. And oh, Alltech, he's stuck around. Oh, clever Alltech. Riv, <laughs> that was so mean. And they're getting buried at the same time. That was so mean and so clever right there because Crumbs, Crumbs himself was trying to outsmart energy. And they're all able to put down some good power. Here we see RF Legendary getting tanked under the, or tanking under the turret. Impact. He's going to have vision on the other side, but he's going to have to go back with a minion wave. He's safe. And it's yeah, oh man, they're be just, all right. I think they're they're all right. relentless right now. And honestly, a little bit greedy because, well, if they can just kill Crumbs. All right, never mind. I was going to say the top lane's low. Like, Conquan's low. Moon was low until he backed. But uh, GBM and Impact are doing quite fine right now. If that last spear rush can get him out. And they are just giving Renegade so much trouble in their own base. All tap pressure onto the Nexus turret. No, oh, they're going to actually go for a fight here. That's Impact going in on Alex. Yeesh. Very, very oh, hard. Freeze. They push him off the turret. They don't even want the turret. They just want kills right now. They said, we have an open inhibitor. Nexus turrets are already going down. Nothing needs to be done in the mid lane. It needs to be done inside the base. And work is being done. That's the fight. That's good night. Possibly 35 minutes in, 13 to 5. Alex East is trying to bait them out of the base. Crumbs goes right into the middle of the frying pan. It gets cooked up. Alex is the next one sauteed and put down. And now Remy trying to do what she can to deter the sight of energy from the Nexus, but it does not work. Energy is going to go 2 0 in the first week of the spring split. 35 minutes, 29 seconds. So much faster than the games we saw yesterday. Impact and Moon feeling pretty good at that w about that win at the end of the day. And Impact did so much. It was really controlling the side lane of the game. We'll see how this one pans out for Dignitas. They really need to have a strong early game and it could prevent them from having to pressure so many objectives to make something happen. It's make it tough for Hoogie, but yeah. And now Stixe is where he should not be. Oh. Uh, it's a lot of damage. He could slalom the minions. Still can heal. Kira slalom as well. There's the heal. Smitty is going to go in as well. They get the Q off. They take down Stixie for first blood along with both of his summers. Kiwi Kid found out on the top side here, but Kira just as low. For Team Dukantas here, I think they're going to try and dive Hoogie in the mid lane yeah. as well with the way he's posturing on Elise here. Very low mana. The flash is down. He can only use the claw to get out, and he probably will panic once he sees them, and he dies right under his turret still. He didn't go anywhere with that claw. And he gets taken down immediately. There's the rest of the team ready to act on it. Nicely played by Dignitas. He's got the BF sword for sure in that pocket of gold. 1,400 yeah. sitting on it right now. So he's farming up very, very far. Here's that macro player we're talking about. Once knowing again. the map, knowing where you are and where the rest of your team is. Dixay gets found out. Grand challenge is executed. Oh! Afromu getting in to save him. The rest, oh, you got to be kidding me. These things can't happen because Stixie is going to keep making those plays. But if the team is there, let the plays be made. On to Kira now. There's the Winter's Bite. Conclusive blows to come through. No place to repel to. And he gets hammered down by Xmithy and Huhi. And CLG puts their foot down and gets back in this one. To be fair, Stixie was probably <laughs> baiting that play out just because the rest of CLG was getting deports in the jungle. But he reactively moved into the right spot. Played us. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Fool me once. 6A. <laughs> he doesn't have the. Uh, you take the good with the, the bad. cavalry to save him that time. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of seeing Dig choose something. This out. Whoa! Shifter gets hit by Darshan immediately, and the rest of the team very nicely done. Everybody gets an assist with the kill going to 6A, and they are onto the turret. Those are the kind of things you have to be ready for. And that flash was from Fuji that you saw happen in the blink of an eye. Can they keep this going is the question. We will see. CLG is about to test them on a dragon, but they're already focused on keeping the lanes. They don't want to be overpressured. And Pikatas is more than happy, it seems, to let this go. CLG, more than happy to pick it up. That's going to be first dragon for them. They are missing that mid turret, though, to equal out. So that's turret. fascinating, actually. Elise is kind of the only champion in the game who has a chance of soloing Rift Herald because Elise can turn him around, open up the eye uh, with the spider lanes and get him down. But anyway, if he gets help, that's the real way of getting Rift Herald as well. So pretty much on par on both sides. A little bit of a gold lead here to Dig. They're trying to force it as well. Sticks a flashes over to the other side of the pillar, getting behind the unbreakable of Aphromoo. Teleport comes in from Darshan and Afro trying to connect the Winter's Bite. 
Smitty's gonna take a bit of damage here, but it is something they are kiting out nicely. This means Dig could be getting the fight they want, but not on the same side of the wall. Very aggressive by Kire, and the rest of the team's not in position to keep going. Darshan actually jumps backwards for safety. Everybody's too far in now from CLG's side. They lose two immediately, going down to Shifter. The fight's now on to CLG Sticks, A. Eh? And what we saw in the NRG game is happening with Dig now, kiting with the Trundle and executing when they want to. A little different build from Kire here. Kire with the side jump, so. Yep. Still that, and here we go. Apollo. Takes off. Now for a move, looks like he's gonna go down here. A bit of solo warding. It's CLG, a loss of a member there. Paul is coming in from the team. Hit, stop that turret, bring mid, go down to Dragon. Spooky Ghost goes out, chills Xmitty out. He is also caught by the pillar, and that's gonna be Xmitty going oh. down. The jungle is no longer a 50-50. Smitty J with Dragon. the repost on the Fiora ultimate right there, completely stuffing the knockback. Great pick there by Team Dignitas, and we said this is going to be the teams fighting back and forth. Who can pick off yeah. whom? And so far, Smitty J avoided the attempt from CLG, and who he falls to Team Dignitas. That's great. I didn't see it right away, but realized what happened afterwards. Oh, through the pink ward. Darshan, Quicksilver not up for like 10 seconds. Oh, what a time. He gets out with the leap. Quicksilver's gonna be up in just a second. He uses it, but still goes down to the amount of damage being output by Shifter and the rest of the team. Woo! Doesn't look like Dignitas is gonna give him any more kills, though. Bottom lane, Smitty and Darshan in a 1v1 once again. He's forced over the wall. And this is gonna be the challenge. Teleport as well, who he wants a piece of this. And he's gonna claw over the wall. He makes it. That's gonna be the lockdown and the knockdown. Smitty J ah. gets hit, that's Aframu. Another one for one across the map. They just can't keep themselves from dying. Game on, they were down 4,000 gold. Now they're close to two, but Aframu continually picked off time and time again. Even with the help of Xmithy. Really though, Roman with a poppy, you're not gonna be yeah. though. So interesting buys. All of the cheap boots are purchased by Team Gingatops and only one, two, two versions of the expensive boots, so to speak, yeah. Ninja Tabi. And stick say, how's Darshan gonna react? He just runs away. <laughs> Turn tail. Oh, Kiwi Kid. The support. Still oh my god, the support's going to war by themselves. And the reason we're getting fights today, ladies and gentlemen, two are now down. Darshan fell in the bot lane. Smitty J came out on top of that fight. And now it's Aframu. He's going down. A triple kill coming in for Apollo. Spooky Ghosts are gonna hit up onto a Smithy. All they have is the run now, and it's going to be down the mid lane. Xmithy's not going to be able to do much, and we have about 30 seconds average on those death timers. Yeah, this could be a big push forward for Team Dignitas. Smithy is doing his best stall of job <laughs> possible to keep the minions That's yeah, away from there. Going to end up saving that inhibitor for the time being, and Team Dignitas will turn for there. Oh, look at this. Smithy J is going to catch Smithy. He's going to zone him off of what would be the Baron attempt 50 50 smite. And then they get it uncontested. So nice job for Smitty J hanging out in the wings here. And he's able to shut this down. The grand challenge onto Smitty. What do you think would win, a hammer or a sword? Looks like the sword. Today the sword wins. Very easily the sword. <laughs> Defensively used for CLG, but they're already behind Dignitas. Dig's not worried about much right now. And they know how to flex the muscles. They have the power to do so. Ultimate goes out immediately after the turret. Zanya's for who he is. Alt is still up. He can go into the tomb if he needs to. There it is. AoE damage coming out. Dignitas still kiting back, and they still find who he. Three members now down for CLG, and they hardly had to even enter the fight there. They just stood on the outside. And credit to Smitty J. He killed Darshan 1v1 right. yet again. So the split pushing game from CLG is done for. Team Dignitas now chance to win. Nicely done. Look at this work that they have set up before. Smitty J as well coming through the bottom lane to open up a window for Dignitas. Apollo going melee range. Still gets the kill for himself. Four down for CLG. That means their nexus will be number five as Aphromu stays alive. Team Dignitas takes down CLG. And what a statement game by Team Dignitas after the disappointing wow. events of yesterday. They take down the defending North American LCS champions. We'll see what kind of skills they have getting into the game. Start casting your votes for the team you think will grab the W. Hashtag TSM win or hashtag TL win. You know where to send it at. LOL Esports will tally up those votes and make sure they get onto the screen. 
And they can just stack up those heals again. Oh, here comes Elise, though. This might burn the flash. Oh! The flash burned the cocoon predicted, and that's a dead yellow star. Double lift can't do anything about it. Finally, this is the first time we've really seen Team Liquid on our map down to the turret. They've obviously done it already with the last engage from Dardock, but this time they do it before he gets there. Still come up with the kill on the double lift, and Dardock is just there for a bit more pressure. The repel is on, the slows are there. That's the pass of W on Lorlo for some extra damage. And man, they get out nicely on that. Two kills going in for Team Liquid. Yep, double lift without yep. turning off the turret for defense. Oh! What timing! Yep, Bjergsen with the instant scatter and stops Dardock in his tracks. OTSM is setting up a play right here. What's this? Teleporting will be a four man. What are you doing, Sven? Coming around the back, Dardock not ready for it. That's where you want to turn it on from Bard, rather. And that's the kill onto Dardock. He just came back from being dead, so now he loses even more ground in his own jungle. TSM have Team Liquid on the run and wipe him off the face of the map. TSM tries to give Team Liquid a taste of their own medicine with the four man dive in the bottom side. No Piglet to be found, though. He had already swapped away, but they still pick up some nice, clean kills as shutdown down to Dardock, and this will mean a real tanky haunter because he picked up both of those. That has been planned for quite some time. There's a bunch of wards from TSM inside of Team Liquid's jungle right now, and you can see Seth Scarin. He was basically on the co- Pretty powerful in numbers right now for Team Solo Mid, and easy access back and forth. Wards on the outside, and they are going to rush the heck out of this. I don't think they're going to be able to stop it. Yep. Very nicely going down. I believe they'll give it to Monster for the top lane. You never really know. Yep. Yeah. You were correct, Riv. Generally, whoever wants to push the advantage the most. It didn't have that much of an impact, rather, on the game already. Down a bit in lane. But a lot of action up there right now. Double if Tempered Fate comes out. He will most likely be going down in this situation. Yellow Star trying to just deter the fight and say, there's more here, believe me. Uh, we have yet to see that come to fruition. And also, as far as this dragon is concerned, Lorlo just popped back into Mininar, so there's no making our up for this one. One of the big reasons Team Liquid is not contesting this dragon. And we're out. Five man journey. I think Hauntzer should get, like, tax. <laughs> anyway, just like, go. Go through, my, go through my portal, I need 10 gold. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Five seconds. All right. And here comes Baron. Hey! Both teams have kind of gotten a feeling for what each other want. Aggression from TSM has been the name of the game here for the past five or so minutes. On to Dardock, he repels out. We're gonna see where Hauntzer can go. He is very hurt. Nar on the yellow star, double is low, Bjergsen gets knocked into the middle, Matt going hard for the priority targets, and Dardock's able to finish that off. Haunts are very low, Liquid's hardly taking damage here, they're not being targeted correctly, because TSM can't find the right members, and Liquid pick up two for one in that fight, only losing Matt. Good fight. This pulls double it back to the bottom lane, Haunt, there was a nice stun landed actually onto Piglet to stop from getting damage on the turret. TSM might look to fight here. Nice to have that true shot barrage down. Tempered fate on the Phoenix. Landed. They still have a front line to keep Phoenix alive. This could be an ultimate coming in. There's the shockwave. It splits Svenskeren and Haunter though on opposite ends. Can they still both be picked up? Only Svenskeren and Haunter had great health to work with or possibly already used it. He goes down immediately. And now they're just looking at Bjergsen. Double lift and yellow star at the turret. Almost health that you can toy with. Double thinks right now on Team Liquid as he fires more Mystic shots. There's the Arcane shift forward. Iceborne Gauntlet onto Matt, and it's the only one. It doesn't slow the rest of the team, and it's going to be hard to chase these guys. Whatever Lorlo hits you with. Whoa! Frozen Mallet, Scat of the Week. Matt stays alive. A Triumph for War keeps him alive as well, and they keep moving forward. Dangerous game, giving some HP to the members of Liquid as well. Bjergsen, it doesn't look good, and TSM just should have stayed at the turret. They wanted to make the best of a bad situation. And it's an aggressive play, not a terrible yeah. game losing play. Usually the consideration is, do we go on Kench, do we not? It's very oh! hard to think. The ultimate, oh! He, he jumps and then flashes. Lorlo with amazing Gnar ultimate. The team trying to capitalize now. The journey being taken to the left side. Monster in the front line has to make sure the team can get here. This is reminiscent of the last fight we saw in the bot lane. There's the gray health out. Team Liquid still kiting as much as they can. 
They come out with kills there and still yeah. don't lose anyone. Still, Team Liquid only has about 6% more gold than TSM despite the 8 kills. This time I did the math right. <laughs> and they're chasing down Bjergsen. Bjergsen gets hit. He is going to get eaten up. Bonzer plays this one correctly. Dardok with the repel in and the jump. And Bjergsen is safe. This is TSM now trying to kite the fight out. This is what Team Liquid's been doing to them. Liquid not getting what they want. D Dardok has no mana right now, and he goes into the fight. Jumps actually out of that with a nice hit towards the minions. Gets out of the True Shot Barrage. And Team Liquid very, very low. The reinitiate by oh, TSM. Looking good. This is double if going with the True Shot Barrage. Is how, or rather with the Mystic Shots. Phoenix does get hit by it. It's going to be Rek'Sai going to the top side. There's Phoenix going down. Finally, Ken's Fen Scaren finds some prey. The tunnel will be in, but no catch for Matt. And what a hectic fight back and forth. Phoenix is the only one that falls. Yeah, the more supportive style from the top Kent here, instead of just going all aggressive, instead stuffing the initiation of Team Liquid, very helpful in that last fight. You could tell Team Liquid unable to get the clean kill. The blue buff Ezreal was looking to turn afterwards. This is Dragon number three now for TSM. Quite a game we got on our hands. It really is, especially only 32 minutes in. No boots of swiftness on Phoenix there, actually Merc Dreads. Tricky choice he has to go with, but Whoa, man, he is Matt, relentless. Matt going crazy with the ulti. They get the ball onto the cow. And it looks like Haunter still has great health to work with. It's a fight they seemingly want. Sven Skarin was already off to the left side. Not going in. Bard ultimately goes back, but they can't really act on it. Matt does go down, but the focus is on the yellow star. And double lift immediately zeroed out by Piglet. He uses Flash to get out. Still has his heal. And with 300 HP, zooms away from that prey seeker of Sven Skarin. Sven's can't do anything on the backside now. Haunter and Bjergsen running for Solace on the fountain. This is going to be a kill. And this is going to be an inhibitor turn if they want it. Piglet played that fight like Absolutely. a madman. Been able to go back and heal up full, plus he's got the blue buff. This is not done yet. The fight could continue. 50 is always scary. If he can keep healthy enough for that Baron to go low, it is at about 3,000 health, 2,500. No, it, that's going to be Baron going down. I was looking at Rek'Sai's health. Sorry, I thought that was on the bottom <laughs> of the screen. It's looking like the same emblem, but it's not. They fooled me. Not providing as much crowd control, though, for his team. Well, interesting because Lorlo still needs to teleport in. He's trying to manage his Narbar, and the dragon just goes. So Svenskar doesn't make it in in time to stop this. And now the split push is still afoot. He's got to teleport in right now. He gave himself no real tunnel to get out until he waits for the time. He's forced to flash. Lorlo is already here. He's going to gnaw out in just a second. It'd be a perfect time. He's going to do it on Yellowstar. But he jumped into the wall when Yellowstar or flashed over. And that's going to be a fight that fizzles out. Bjergsen as well as Haunter, Svenskaren quite low as they move in here now, thinking they can maybe pick off Lorlo. But Scatter just misses off the end. Those front lines are concerned. All right, getting spooky. Oh. Matt, Matt, you yeah, know, he's getting himself in a bit of a hairy situation now as we get to the late game. The team's not always been with him in that range. Lorlo is his buddy now. They're hand in that's hand. Dead. But that helping him. They actually not work for them. Haunter's in the front line. We said it'd take a bit to take him down, so they focus Fence Garen, another tanky member of the team, and he's down. Double lift actually catches the boomerang, and he hits a bit of damage, but is able to arcade shift out. Inside of Haunter now gets spit out. Now it's on to Bjergsen. Dardok has his eyes. The team is trying to focus as well. A great scout of the meek by Bjergsen to slow down a bit of the engage from Team Liquid. Haunter now has been taking so much this damage. Is the turn. He is absorbing it all. Phoenix gets into the fight with the ultimate, but he goes down with this flash, the barrier's not even used. TSM is really starting to take hold of this game. One last quick shot, or mystic shot coming in from Doublelift. The triple kill from him and TSM are now pulled back into this one. And hope is more than alive for TSM after that fight. They again, this time, got the jump because they were able There's to those minions. They cut through the front line of Team Liquid. Matt's ultimate was burned without success, and he could no longer eliminate either Bjergsen of Dublin from the team fights, which he had been doing the entire game. So now they did take down Sven Skaren, but had nothing left for Haunter. The chase utility of the blue buff, Ezreal and Bard, reign supreme. And I think they're going for the win on this push. You have to be kidding me. No way, 43 minutes in, 16 to 10. On top the whole time was Team Liquid. Now it's TSM. They're hanging by a thread, Team Liquid is, and they're not gonna be able to come back in time. Yeah, they take down Double Lift, but there's enough damage after they take down Dardoch to take down the Nexus. TSM may have gone down in day one, but they will come back strong for day two and go one to one in the first week of the Springs play. TSM take down Team Liquid. What a peculiar game, Riv.
We heard Double Lift talk about in the soundbite before the game how this season is more punishing than previous seasons. You make one mistake and you lose. Well, for whatever reason, TSA made numerous mistakes and did not lose. Swap, yeah. It's okay, we're good. Now, guys at home, head over to Twitter. Let us know who's going to take this game. Send your votes at Elevable Esports with the hashtag FoxWin or hashtag C9Win. Let us know who it's going to be. Echo Fox right now, one and zero. Could end the week in first place. Cloud enough to a rough start against Immortals yesterday, but now could answer back. He can still collapse just on your AD carry. Rush, though, looking for a top lane gank here. He's going to try to tilt this matchup so balls can get pressure later. This could be bad for Kane. For the oh. sun lands during the right amount of time, he has no chance to teleport away. Perfectly executed gank here by C9. Oh, speaking of gank flash. This could Goggin. pop the egg. Ooh. Ooh. Thunderlords, I think, was down after trading earlier. Yeah. Flash, pulverize. Here comes oh. Rush for kill number two. Keith. Now to get spot, a good pillar by some time. Seven to heal. They want him. They're going to get him. Sneaky. Second kill of the game. And high with the go button there. That's exactly what you want to see for Cloud9 if you're one of their fans. High with the calls and balls with the pressure. With Rush sneaking up the back of this lane. Balls has got a much better teleport. Here comes Jensen. Okay, here comes the dive. TP being burned. Here comes everybody at all. Keep locked up under his turret. There's the damage. Jensen staying alive because the turret is still on high. He was taking it. Walks away just in time. Drops the aggro. Perfectly executed. Dive by Cloud9. Two for zero. No casualties. Five man in the bot lane. Because what the mistake wasn't that that play was able to happen. It's that you blew the flashes on the previous one. But speaking of making plays, though, Sneaky all alone. And a pillar stops him up, so Sneaky's got nothing to do right here. Has to walk forward away from bullet time. Keith pulls aggro. He's going to survive this, though, and get his first kill of the game. Oh. And high out of nowhere over the wall. Flash burn. Froggen ice balls himself oh. off. Cocooned by Rush, though, is in range. Burns the egg. And who's going to get the gold? They can give to whoever they want. Jensen takes it. 5-1, to one, Cloud9. That wall almost able to keep Rush out, but the cocoon over it. Like I think you're actually more durable by just finishing the row than actually going towards Arm Guard. Arm Guard's 1,200 gold. Row is uh, maybe about 1,400-ish. Like, it's a bit more expensive from where he is right now, but it's just more stats that way. I think it's actually just won't get killed just yet, but now with Jensen coming over, they're really going to put the damage in. One more hit will do it. Oh, oh Sneaky! Engaged. Oh, that was a mistake. He has to burn Flash to get away. Heal burned as well, and the team's going to try to re-engage Trip. Finally oh. comes down. But that was not the right play. Rush will get dropped down. One kill in for Keith, and now High, the next casualty of war. That's what Cow even stands for. Double kill now for Keith. That's going to be good for Rush. Fox. Just very aggressive as well. Simultaneously, a little too far forward. Okay, so Echo Fox is linking in as best they can, but that deficit is still pretty large because yeah. plus two kills or not, a tier two turret is worth almost that much gold as well. Dragon number one on the field now for Cloud9, so even more stats for them. And Cloud9 is now on the wrong side of the lane. They are all on the left side jungle. Echo Fox is here. They are ready to posture up now. TP. How much can they block off? Here's the TFLD. Here's the teleport in from KFO as well. Balls on the side. Getting cut off. And Cloud9 castrated. The top laner has gotten this one. Sneaky now in the back lines. Running away from KFO. And the shutdown comes oh. through though. Keith is dead and Sneaky is up. Now KFO on the wrong side of this one. Down he goes. A flash knock it, but Hard doesn't have the damage. And Jensen gets the killing spree. Knocking down big. Hard gonna be double killed as Sneaky gets farther and farther ahead. A four for zero in favor of Cloud9. And that was Cloud9 with the shot calling. Once again, the dividing TP here. We're coming to back you up. And they also blew Jensen's ultimate to see everyone, to find the positions, and also to relocate. Really well played there. And there's the Baron falling into their hands. Froggen, too far away to have anything to do with it. Solid smite by Rush, just to make sure. He actually had all his summoners and yep. his ulti available in that fight. The fact that he got soloed out, didn't kill or flash in time, never got to do what he needed to do. Huge, because that could have been a much better Headbutt pulverize on him. Or a gold card, or you're just going to have fewer damage all over him. But now fewer, fewer damage. damage. All over hard right now, trying to get as many oh. of the vitals as possible. And hard will be killed. A giant heal and balls will survive Ooh. through the bullet Ra time. Keith. Keith knocked into the team. Beautiful play by High. Rush now on the chase as well. High gets aggro. That's pretty crucial for C9 right here. Rush just doesn't take enough damage even through the Lissandra ulti. And Cloud9 staying alive. The wave through back and forth doesn't mean too much. C9 very far. Rush right. less likely for him, you know? High's had to be very adaptive throughout his career. I oh. 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 Oh, red buff. Oh, uh, oh the minion. Self ult to heal. Oh. That's so hard to time, though. That's, you're just pretty much taking a guess there. Once again, Honey Badger. Balls in the front row. Posts a lot of the damage, actually. Blocks a Frost Flash. And wow, in they go. Big already gone. Calling small now with that bad. The team's forced to run away. Played in the jungle. 
He's like, oh, uh, Italy? Uh, let's, let's play Gragas. Gragas is better now, too. <laughs> but and here we go. A bullet time hits basically nothing but the golden statue of Jensen. Hard force a flash away, and in comes Balls yet again. Froggen about to be knocked out here. Plenty of damage coming through now. Turned into an egg, and into the back line they go. Multiple kills now picked up for C9. A whitewasher, a four for one, and now KFO left on his lonesome. Hit the Zonia, still gonna die. Nice time by Sneaky, lands the Piltover or Peacemaker over the respawn on that one. 17 to four, this should be the game. Under 30 minutes, Froggen got his wish. Shorter games, but unfortunately not a win for them. Cloud9, gonna end the first week one and one. And every split for the last few splits, we're just like, Cloud9's back. Well, they're looking in a new type of form here with Rush in the jungle and High now on support. Let us know. Immortals could go two and zero. Impulse could stop the slide right now. Send hashtag IMT win or hashtag TIP win, and we will tally your votes in a few minutes. Show it on air. But Immortals, how high is playing? You think of how Bunny Foo Foo starts fights. Remy. Adrian is actually, in my mind, the best NA LCS. Oh, second. oh baby. He's running. Rain over, Rain over is on. And oh. got him. First blood solo kill in the enemy. Oh, second two. And another flash burn as well. Jeez, Immortals already. Already. Don't ready. use just yet. There it is. But the shield's back up. They waited too long. Turn on Mash. Ooh. Summoner heals on both sides. TP could be available for both, but only Huni is coming into us. Pobelter oh, comes he in. E. He doesn't dodge it. Nice Glitter Lance in from Pobelter. Second kill of the game for Immortals. Too late on the flash there from Mash. He already got tagged. Huni winning a trade yet again on Defang. It's only going to get worse since they've both recalled once and got items. Here comes a push on a Poe Belter who does not have flash. Ken should be able to get this. There's the headbutt. There's Yellow. the pulverize. There's the gold card. But Ken, only level four, can't make the dive happen. He's going to die for this one. Whoa. They don't have the damage to kill him. Now Bebe getting attacked without flash. Right oh. over is not going to chase this one in just yet. He'll, he'll survive. He got a potion going. Okay. He's close to the oh, he's going, he's going around top, though. He's just applying pressure on Feng. Feng knows, though. Feng now has to give up minions, though. Impulse with reasonably good communication. And now Feng, I think he just needed to run to the right and just suck it up. He's going to get cocooned at some point. He's just taking auto attacks now. He's not going to get away from this one. Oh. I think a, he probably was dead anyway, but I think a slight misplay all the yeah. same. He had no flash, so Adrian just pushing Bebe out. And when you push the jungler out, you know you're not going to be able to have a counter gank top. So you immediately run there and look oh at this. Oh, no. Hey. That's the kind of move tilts are made out of. Fang TP's in the lane, immediately gives away another 350 gold. Into the mid lane goes Wild Turtle. Gate oh. to just die. Wild Turtle. Valkyries forward. Continues to succeed every single champion while has played so yeah, far. No. Team's coming. There's Bebe as well. Here comes the dive. This is going to be very difficult. He's going to get Fang first. He's healing. Huni. Stuck in 1v3. Just kidding. It's a 2v2. Poe out there is here. And look at that. Immortals is turning the fight right around. Right round, baby. Right round. In comes Ken. They want to get this one to happen. Huni still not going down. Poe belts are on the chase. Kills off Bebe. He He's got going. back. And now Huni is still in the chase. Gate dying as well. It was two versus four. And they win it. Immortals living up to their name. 2v4, no deaths, no dragons, no turrets taken just yet. Adrian solo oh. All right, Immortals going for their next objective to control. Dragon number one, nice buff of stats for everyone. 6% bonus attack damage and ability power. And this, of course, does count your base AD, so uh, everyone gets at least, like, four attack damage, even if you didn't build any. Sure. Oh, yeah, no. anything to make AD carries look better, you know? I can't TP. Oh, there's the engagement. The oh, down. no, Wild Turtle oh. gets the Wild Grove, gets the channel, and it stays alive. Wild Turtle. The team keeps him afloat just barely. Ken has to run. There's a cocoon onto him. Oh, Taking a lot of damage. damage. Has to run away. Oh, man. Might burn. No, he healed. But He killed him. Wow. I don't even know what got him. I don't think he does Pobelter either. Pobelter killed him. Pobelter, does he have a red buff? good at changing into spider, uh, into human form, and getting that last auto attack off with the red spike. Uh, oh. Wild Turtle finds Bebe, finds some damage. Uh, oh, gets stunned up. Gate trying to kill off Wild Turtle. Ignite oh. is on. Here comes the cooling. Wild Turtle gets out. Nice pick up there. Rain over, gets the execute. And the flash cocoon lands oh on the gate. Down it goes. Pobelter is dominating. 6 0 oh, and 3. Just kills spread across everywhere. No one has high KP in this game. Blue for Pearl Nice and easy there. 
I do like how builds have evolved because Lich Bane gives CDR. You can do Lich Bane Lucidity Boots, and that's already 10 cooldown reduction right there at the start. So he's sitting on 30 CDR without any other major investments, and he, it allows him to like really change his builds up. Like he can go Rod of Ages, which is an insane item, and not have to get like a, a, a 20 CDR item like Umbrella Namicon. I think it's oh, very good Ken. on someone like Lulu. Ken's not in a good spot. Hiya, Barbie. Looney has to respect <laughs> the knockups. Puts in the repose perfectly. Again, blocks a gold carbon. Stuns Ken, and Ken goes down 15-0. That would be insane. Oh. Not even able to surrender in a professional game of League of Legends. Oh, Another I have it. Poe Belter basically one-shots Bebe. 18 minutes on towards the Nexus. Impulse couldn't surrender if they wanted to. And Immortals looking for blood, looking for the kill, looking for absolute perfection in this game. Both Nexus turrets down. 18 minutes and 10 seconds. Rain over, trying to stay alive. The Nexus is low. Can they do it? A perfect game in 18-15 for Immortals. Fastest game in NALCS history. These guys, you had better believe the hype. And their name is... Thank you, Riv. Our fastest game in North American LCS history, 18 yeah. minutes and 20 seconds. That was just a complete showing of dominance <laughs> by Immortals in that game. It actually happened. So the only other perfect game in North American LCS history was in the spring of 2013, Dignitas Perfect Game Complexity. But this game was much faster than right. that. And so we define a perfect game by no dragons taken against you, no turrets lost, no deaths. Mm -hmm. And that is exceedingly rare. Uh,